Hello everyone. So today I am on Cajun. This is the uh, he's forward horse, far and sour horse, and PC horse. He's got all that going for him. And he's doing really well. He's been here about a month now. And uh, his gates are much better. If he gets anxious, he can still get pacey. But otherwise, it's pretty good. And if I leave it up to him on what to do, of course, he will pace because that's the easiest. So I have to make him use himself. The barn sour is getting better. I had the camera on the other day, but the battery died. So I didn't get to show you that. But I went up and down the hill and he did pretty well on the top part. And then when we got more towards the bottom, he got fast. So I went up and down just in that one area. And then I came to where I am right now and went back and forth a whole bunch of times and then went back and tied him up. And overall he did very well. So what I've been doing is just breaking down the parts where he goes fast. And if he goes fast there and we're headed towards home, then I just go back and forth until I get him thinking to slow down and if I don't or he's bad I just get off when I'm away from home and then I walk the rest of the way back home and then I tie him up when we get there okay. and that has worked pretty well with him you can play different games with your horse you're trying to just find out where are the magnets for the horse sometimes they know you're going to tie him up so when they get like a quarter mile from home that's where they're totally fine and they're not goofing around anymore so you might have to work in, on the part before that and go back and forth okay. all right so we're going uphill i still am lunging him even though he's older i lunge him to help him warm up because that helps a lot of pacey horses not to be as pacey when you work them first and get them warmed up some and with him i'm trying to take out some extra energy although he has lots of it so all right, so we're going up the hill. This is where you want to work on your horse's hind end. If you're really trying to build it, you just walk slow like this with their head down and make them push you all the way up that hill. But the slower you go, the harder it is for the horse. That's why they always want to speed up when they see hills because it makes it much easier for them to get up it. But I'm working on his gates, not just his hindquarter. So I'm going to flat walk up this. And when he first came, I had his head a little bit lower. This is where I would like it. It's kind of just at my horn level. And I'd like him just to keep it there. I don't want it way down. He also rooted on the bit. He yanked on the bit and I would just hold and not release until he let go. But I was very consistent and my timing is good. So that got better very fast. If your timing is not good and you're not consistent, you don't make them do it every time. Guess what? It's not gonna work has to be every single time so every time he pulled on the bit i just held it didn't matter if we were home or we were out here that's what happened so he said this lady i'm not gonna mess with her because she's just gonna pull on me i don't get in a fight with them i just kind of hold it okay. so you see he did a nice flat walk up the hill you can hear him breathing he's like this is hard and today we're going to go further out if he's looking around like he just did, he can get a little spooky, even though he's older. I just slide the bit to get more of his attention back. Okay, so going up these stairs, I do release. Then I might hold them together again. Get to the stair, push my hands forward and release. You can lean forward some. And you'll see he's going out nice and slow, isn't he? But he probably won't come back that slow so you know when they go out this slow in time they should be able to come back like that but you got to work on it that's the problem with most of these horses is either the previous people who owned the horse didn't work on it or the one who has it is not being consistent in getting after the horse and making them do it and so they just take advantage of you and they start getting all these bad habits that they didn't have before and then those bad habits i just tapped them that's why i said came up then these bad habits stay because you let them get away with it. So you'll see, I'm not riding him on a loose rein. I'm trying to make him work on his gait. So I have a light contact, enough to keep his head straight. Except right here, this is the part they hit the sidewall. So here I'm just letting him go slow, put his head down. Now I'm going to pick up again. Push with my calves. 
ask him to go forward. When his head comes up, I just hold. And when it's where I want it, I just open my fingers just slightly. So he gets a release, but he knows he can't yank his head all the way back up. Remember, some of you release too much, you open your fingers straight, which is very nice. But it's too much, and the horses that are learning go on free. And they pop their head all the way back up, and then you ask them to bring it down. Then you release, and it pops all the way back up, and you just go back and forth. So I just release a little, so I go, yeah, that's what I want, but you got to keep your head down. So my message to them is clearer. So everywhere there's a little hill, I'm going to make him go just a little faster because that's going to help build up his running walk. Now this is actually kind of his running walk right now, which he's doing, which is pretty good. His head carriage is good. He's smooth. He's got head shake. I'm moving slightly back and forth in the saddle. Each horse is different on how much you will move. Overall, it's quite nice. So even though he's doing well here with me, when he goes home, if the owner doesn't keep after him and keep up on his gates and his barn sourness, he's going to go right back the way he was. That's what happens with training. Training is a learning experience. They're learning something, but they'll only keep learning and getting better if the owner then keeps it up with the horse. Or you keep him in training a long time, like a year or more, but most people don't. Most people, you get a month or two with their horse and off the horse goes. So then it's up to the owner to keep after the horse. They got the start and they can do great, but you have to do the rest. And that's how it works. Otherwise you buy an expensive horse that has all the stuff done, but you still have to work with it. It just won't be as much and it shouldn't be as hard to do. But you either pay up front for training or you pay later for training. That can be for training or medical bills if you've got a horse that's really untrained. So just keep that in the back of the mind when you're figuring out how much to spend on a horse. Okay, so he's still gating well. His head's going up and down. Now we're going downhill, so what happens? They get a little pacey. Always remember that, so you got to go just a little bit slower until it flattens out. Okay, it's still going downhill now. It's going to start going uphill. So now I can ask for a little bit more speed, just a little bit. Yes, for too much, you're going to go past your running walk and you're going to go either into a step pace or a rack, depending on the horse's talent. So they should have some head shake. If it's smooth and no head shake, you got a rack. If it's smooth with a slight bump in it and no head shake, that's usually a step pace. But you do what you can. I'm a perfectionist because I'm training these horses, but you just get it pretty smooth. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so we're going uphill. So he's doing good. I'm making him use his back end. Now, as the hills get harder, they're going to try to pop their head up and make it easier. So you hold contact, keep their head down, and make them push with that back end. You should feel them pushing up the hill like you're... Yeah, on an escalator, like somebody's putting their hand on your back and shoving you up the hill if you're doing it right. Okay. So that's what it should feel like if you're engaging their back end and you're either walking up the hill or doing a flat walk or a running walk. A rack feels different going up the hill. You can rack them up the hill just so you know. It will strengthen their gait. Uh, the horse has to have the talent to do it and you just got to keep their head up so they don't start getting trotty but you can make them really strengthen that back end and with the horses that rack because they will get you know different muscles and then sometimes their backs don't look so nice because you're riding them with their head up and their back inverted it's good to trot them in the arena or work them with their head down in the arena at a slower gait so you still build up their muscles so you're trying to counteract what you're doing with them when you're gating. Okay. And you can, some of the horses you can gate, uh, you can do the rack with their head down, but some of them you can't, they're too trotty and you gotta bring their head up. And then once they can do it well, then over time you can tuck their nose in, but they're always gonna have just a little bit higher head carriage. Okay, so he's been gating the, this whole thing very well, hasn't he? So I'm not resting him until we get to the top, and that's where I'm going to change my direction and come back down. 
And that's when we'll see if Cajun has put all of his lessons together. And, but he still might be fast. He might not get slow until we get closer to home. So we'll just see. All right, this is the last hill and it's a steep one. I'm still gonna keep his head down. I'm not gonna let him throw it up because if he does, he's most likely gonna pace or step pace up this hill. So his head's just a little bit below my horn. I'm gonna tilt forward just to help him, but I'm keeping his head down. Now I can really feel him pushing with his back end. He's going to struggle a little bit because this is difficult. Right? It's kind of like pulling something up the hill because I'm making him keep his head down and drive us up there. All right. So now we get a nice view of a whole bunch of farmland. And we're going to take a break and then we're going to go back. All right. So now we're going to head back home. Yep. He already sped up. Just that one step, I can tell. All right. So we're gonna slowly go down the hill. So I'm gonna ride him with contact. I'm gonna squeeze, relax on the rein. Squeeze, relax on the rein. Squeeze, relax on the rein. I'm gonna stop him. Whoa. I want him to learn to go down the hill slow. There you go. Now I'm gonna let him go. Squeeze, relax on the rein. Squeeze, relax on the rein. Squeeze, relax on the rein. I'm standing in the stirrup so I'm off his back so he can use his back. Go boy. Squeeze, relax. Now when we hit the flat part, he might try to speed up. So I'm still going to half halt. That's the squeezing and the relaxing. I'm going to half halt. Half halt. Half halt. Can you believe how many times I'm doing it? Half halt. Half halt. Because you don't want to hang on him. So you want to squeeze, relax. Just relax. Now here he's pretty good. And watch how much faster he can go up the hills going home. Of course, they're much smoother. He's eating very well. The hill's good. Good job, Cage. Good boy. Now, whoa. So I'm going to stop here and there in different parts of the trail. Good job. Now, see, as soon as I reached up, he went. So I'm correcting him. I'm like, no. Uh-uh. So if I leave him to his own opinions, he would just take us home. So we got it now. He's a little antsy now that I made him stop. So I'm going to do a little serpentine. So, it's got to keep happening, because he's like, it's just going to go back to the old way, so why do I have to wait? So that's why it's important to do this with your horses when they're younger, fix them, and you won't have these problems when they're older. But if you never do it 100%, you never take the time, work with it weeks on weeks, then it's never going to completely go away. And training helps, but again, I'd have to have him a lot longer to have this be completely gone away. And I don't think this is a hard thing to do. Squeeze, relax, squeeze, relax. It's just being consistent and staying after him. But you can tell on the way out, he was much slower versus going back. Now this is slower than when he first came, so it's an improvement, but it's not what I would like. I would like to just let go of the reins and not have him speed up, but that's what he's gonna do. Okay, so I just keep half all thing. Now he's pulling me, so I'm going to hold. Let's see if he yanks on the bit. No, he gave. Good boy. Okay. So I'm trying to show him. Now he's going to speed up because now he's pissed. That if you just keep pulling, you're going to make it worse because I'm going to make you go slower. So this is a little temper tantrum. So I just keep turning. Keep turning. Keep turning. And you just keep your leg off. And Take, let go, take, let go. I'm just saying it in different ways, but I'm doing the same thing. So, hill was very nice, gate was nice. So, we got some good things coming out of this. So, kind of stand in your stirrups, stay vertical, half halt, relax, half halt, relax, half halt, relax. Let's put him stop. Whoa. Now he pulled, so I'm not letting go. Now I'm going to release. And his head goes down. So before, he'd, he'd have a, quite a fit. He'd be yanking his head all over, yanking on the bit when I did that to him. So. Yes, I know. He's like, I can't wait to get the hell out of here. Okay, I'm going to stop. He's going a little fast. Oh, now I know once I walk off, he might get pissed off again. Still go fast. That's okay. I'm just giving him different jobs. It's got to be the same answer every time. You speed up, I do this. You speed up, I do that. You speed up, 
I'm not going to let us go home fast. Okay, but this would be very difficult to do with other horses unless I was first. So if I was working on this, I either work alone or I say, hey, I got to be first so I can stop when I need to stop. Because if I stop and everybody leaves, that's not going to make your horse better. It's just going to make them worse. Let's stop again. Whoa. But he's doing better stopping. He will stand here for a couple of seconds, more than I had before. So, you know, it all comes in time. So patience. But you get a forward horse. You got to work on this. Now, I don't want his head that low. He's just doing that. Because sometimes they put their head too low to get away from the bit. So uh, you'll see me. I just keep raising it up. But I do like how much better his gates are. He's very smooth. Before he kept step pacing, so, you know, it was somewhat smooth, but he had that uh, bounce in his step. When you ride a really gated horse, you start to get really picky on what you think is acceptable because you know how good they can be. So you can do what's called like a shoulder and you just turn the horse a little sideways. They're going to keep heading towards home. So the horse will actually do it for you. So you just pull on a right rein, a little right leg, and that'll kind of push their body over. And that'll help to separate their legs, but also slow them down. So it helps with the pace. And then you do that, I don't know, five steps, something. And then you turn the opposite way. So left rein, left leg, but you keep looking straight. And you keep pushing your horse sideways because you just tell him, well, if you want to go fast, that's fine. Let's just do it sideways because that's harder. Then you can say, will you go straight and slow down? And they're like, no, I won't. And you're like, okay, let's do it to the right. And now let's straighten and let's do it to the left. And then you go straight and say, will you walk slower now? And he says, well, yeah, a little bit. Uh, right here, I can't do it because I would smack them into the trees. I'm not going to do it there. Now I'm going to try stopping again. Oh. Again, this might take millions of times, but it does work. Okay, now it's mad again, so I'm going to turn to the right. Then I'm going to turn to the left. And then we're going to be going on the single track, so I won't be turning at all because you can't do it there. So right here, before we get into it, easy pull a little hard because I can't do that once we get in the narrow part. Anytime it's narrow or the footing's not good you got to be careful when you pull because you can you know make them trip or make them go sideways and hit the walls. So I'm going to stop here because I got plenty of room. He's dragging me. Now I just kind of slide my fingers up the reins. Now see that little bounce in his step? Because now he's going towards the step here. So I'm going to stop him again. Well, I have room. And you heard him just complain. But this is so much better than when he showed up. It's controllable. It's a little fast. But not bad. Okay, so now I'm in the narrow part. So in here I really don't want to stop. He's going slow, but it's because he's going in the bathroom. Now he's speeding back up, so I'm going to stop him. Okay. So some people don't even know their horses are barn sour. You buy one, you don't know it's barn sour because you tried it off on some trail somewhere because the person didn't have you do it from their house. Lots of horses are barn sour. People just don't know it because they're trailing out from their house and they're not riding around it. So I do both. I always ride around the house, even if there's no trails. Ride around the barn. His head's way up, so I'm holding pressure. And, uh, and I trail her out. But lots of people say, I don't want a barn sour. And I said, do you trail her out? And they go, yeah. And I said, even if you buy a horse that's barn sour, you won't even know it because you're trailering out. Okay, so I'm going to stop because he's pulling me and there's a step down right here. Now I'm going to let him go. We're going to slow down right here and then let him go. So in between these stair things, you control their speed. 
but when you get to where they have to step down, you don't want to pull on them there because they need their head and their neck. And if it's a big drop, you just lean back, grab the horn. Okay, so we're going to stop right here. Roll. Now we're going to see if he's... So overall, I thought that was much better. It's not perfect, but it is much better. Now we're going to see how the rest of this goes because now we're closer to home. And this is what we've been going up and down. So right now he's fast, so let's try going sideways down this. That's better. Boy. Yeah, that's fun changing. <clears throat> I know. He's like, they warn me about you. Now I'm staying this one direction right now because the footing. But he's staying pretty slow. This is pretty good. And you've been dragged down hills going just a little fast. <laughs> it's much better. So it's not going to be perfect for a long time. So you just have to gauge what you're getting from the horse. Is it better? And great. Yeah. And sneezing is a release. It can be allergies, but it's also a release. So it's usually a good sign. Okay, I'm going to stop for a second. Oh. Good boy, his head's down, but don't let them yank the reins out of your hands. He's like, I'm so close to home. If I could just yank them out, we could fly home. So now as I walked off, he got a little pushy and kind of pulled on that bit, and I just held. Now I'm going sideways again. He pulled on the bit, and I just held. I'm still holding. I'm trying to push him to the left, and he's like, I'm not doing that. So I'm still pushing, and I'm not going to let go. No, nope. there you go. Okay, because you give in or they get that rain from you and then they know they're they're in control, not you. They're going to drag you home the rest of the way. Uh, some of them will take you off into the bushes. They don't care. They'll run right through everything. If you got one like that, it's best to get off and practice it somewhere else or practice it more at home. Okay, so he did pretty good. He was a little fast up at the top. But otherwise, he stayed good. I'm going to stop him here because now that I said that, he got a little fast. So his head went up. I held. He threw his head down, and I held because his. I want his head down, but not down as far as he has it. That's not the answer. I just want it down and not pulling right there was good before he set down more. Now he speeds up every time. Now he just went to the left, so I just correct him with my left rein and leg. Otherwise, he was going to take me into those bushes. He's like, I'm mad at you, and I'm going to go sideways now. I'm like, no, so move off my left rein and leg. Now we're right by the scarecrow thing, so I'm going to stop him. Wait until he's not pulling on me. Now you got to be careful. Remember, if you stop too long and you have one with major anxiety, they can rear up. So. You stop them, stay tilted just a little bit forward. So if you did it too long by accident, they start to rear up. You're right there with them. You don't want to be leaning back. They rear up and you yank on their mouth and pull them over. There's lots of stories like that. So you don't want to do that. So now we're going to stop here again. Now he's my other horses, so he should be happy. All right. Now he just yanked on the rein, so I'm just holding. So that's the rooting that most people were talking about when I said, what do you guys want me to cover? Then I forget to put it in the title of the videos because I'm so tired. Now he's pulling me again, so I'm going to hold. I was like, oh, the more you pull, the longer it takes us to get home. She's like, what are you doing? I see that lady torturing all you people. How do I get in on that? Okay, so head's coming up. I'm holding, relaxing. Hold, relax, or release. Okay, now he's pretty good. It's just a little fast. Now he's slowing down. So you gotta stay relaxed. Make sure you're not gripping with your legs. Good job. Now he's slowed way down because he knows we're getting closer to home. Mm -hmm. So now I can loosen a little on the ring. And I'm not holding him as much because now he knows what's coming next. Okay. So every time now i could say well he was better this time i don't have to tie him up this time oh i could say that but i'm not going to because i know that he's had this problem probably all his life so i'd rather overdo it so 
nope, we're going to tie him up. If he was my horse, I'd probably tie him up for the next six months or more. To make sure it's really in his head that, that I don't want you to be barn sour. Okay, there's horses in the bushes, so that's what he's looking at. So, you'd rather overdo it, make sure you really have fixed the problem, not it's partially fixed or the horse was guessing, because then they're going to go right back to the way they were. Because you probably didn't fix it all the way, because you weren't consistent. And when you thought it was good, then you went back to letting them slack. I'm going to stop. It's not bad. He's just pulling, going down the hill. It's just because he's unbalanced. Okay. Yeah, I know. It's not your fault. So. So now I'm going to slide the bit because now he's really pulling. And I'm going to stop again. So what I'm trying, the reason I keep stopping, I'm trying to associate that every time you pull or every time you speed up, we it just makes me stop instead of get you home faster. So the easier answer is you just walk home slow and we'll get there. But if you pull me or you speed up or you have a little hissy fit, it just takes us longer to get there. And again, with mares, they'll usually get this down quicker and figure it out. They might throw a bigger tantrum because they're really going to test you. Look, he's afraid of the hay. Um, but they'll usually get the concept quicker and if you do it right it might be a big war in the beginning and then they'll get it and then you know, it'll be fixed and then you just got to keep it up but with the gelding it can take a much longer time so you have to realize it's not just that he's being a jerk the whole time on purpose he just doesn't understand and his reward has been when he's been getting home so he's looking for that reward he just has to understand every time he gets here now it's not a reward but again you might have to repeat that thousands of times to get there all right so overall i think he did really 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 well but we're still going to tie him up for an hour or so remember to let the bit out very slow out of their mouth uh, i just wanted to say one last thing you got to put the time in to make the horse better if you don't put the time in the horse is never going to get better and nobody likes to hear that do they nobody wants to hear you have to put time in and they just want the quick fix it's the same with the gate they're like what heavy shoe do i put on so he gates well that's just a quick fix put the time in get through it and you'll have a nice horse and you won't have to spend years going through this stuff okay it might be a tune up here and there but it won't be so much but don't put the time in you're gonna have that problem forever <laughs> <laughs> exactly.